What's going on guys? We are back with another exciting video today. This has been a very requested video uh, to be made. So we are answering those requests today and we are going to be testing Thorn Countess. We are going to be doing a couple different uh, videos of testing. We're going to be doing a part one and a part two. Part one here is going to be um, strictly based on field fighting. Uh, so what you are going to see is, again, strictly field fighting. We have eliminated all of the variables that we possibly could uh, within our control. We removed all base skins. We both left the alliance. Um, we fought in neutral territory. So Josh and I did everything we possibly could. Uh, to eliminate all the variables we could. And also, uh, shout out to Josh uh, and Salima for helping me orchestrate this and get this testing done. So very much appreciated um, to them as well and helping me kind of eliminate all the variables that we possibly could. Um, and then also, when it comes to units, we are uh, both going to be running Liberty main battle tanks. Both are going to be at nine stars. Uh, we went ahead and did the nine star uh, because that's kind of about the average to slightly above average unit uh, star ranking for most players at this point in time in the game. Uh, but we did, we, nine stars, no uh, enhancements. It was at all four enhancement categories were left at 0%, so straight nine star. Uh, we did remove all parts, so we didn't have any parts or armor wrenches involved here. Uh, and we did have maxed out modifications. Obviously, there are the variables of VIP buffs things like that, but those are um, kind of out of our control. Um, our tank tech is very, very similar, so there's not a whole lot of difference in terms of the tank tech for our advanced combat. We're pretty much in line with each other there as well. So we got it about as clean as you can possibly get it, and you can also see um, as we go throughout this testing video that our units are both 16.9 uh, million in terms of unit power. So uh, with that being said, we went through and we are going to test um, quite a few different combinations, some more common combinations that you guys see in the field, as well as some more uncommon combinations, just to get a real good look at what, what makes sense, what doesn't make sense, uh, so you guys have a better understanding of Thorn Countess and who she pairs well with. So with that being said, guys, um, if you guys have any questions after watching this testing video, uh, please do go ahead and uh, drop a comment below and I will answer those um, accordingly. So with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoy this video and we will jump right into it. We've got our first combination here for testing. We have got Thorn Countess and Guardian of Truth is going to be on Josh's tank. And then I'm going to be running the same officer combination, uh, which is probably at this stage in the game, the most utilized, most popular officer combination on main battle tanks and helicopters alike. Uh, that's going to be Steel Fighter and Guardian of Truth. So I'm going to use what is widely regarded as the best combination so far. Uh, so that way we can test that against all of these different combinations uh, of Thorn Countess. So we're going to start from the top and work down. And the first combo is going to be Thorn Countess and Guardian of Truth. And we'll go ahead and get it started. Doing a little bit of damage. Not uh, not a ton, but a little bit.
All right. That is Thorn Countess, Guardian of Truth. We're going to go ahead and hit a retrain right here. We're going to train up, and then we are going to jump to combination two, which is going to be Thorn, Countess, and Spanner. We'll be right back. We are back with combination number two. This round, we have got Thorn, Countess, and Spanner. Seems to be uh seems to be a little bit of a slugfest, to be honest. I don't know. Uh it looks like okay. Alright, Josh has got the the edge early on me. Man, this is taking this is taking quite a while. This is this is definitely striking me as a more survivability unit combination than an offensive uh, you know, going out to kill other unit combination, which, you know, on the surface makes sense because of Spanner's uh, you know, healing properties. Uh but Nonetheless, it's uh, it's interesting that I'm really not getting any any kind of damage, um, you know, inflicted on Josh's unit with Guardian of Truth, which is, uh, you know, geared for tanks specifically and has got that penetration damage and things like that. So that's very interesting that that is kind of being offset by Spanner right now a little bit or a lot of bit, I should say, actually a lot of bit. Man, this is taking a while. You know, something, and of course, at the end, um, we're going to go through and we're going to look at all of the uh, reports as well. On our end, we're going to see, obviously, time of attack, um, you know, things like that, units lost, um, or, you know, meaning how many units we were able to kill of Josh's. But assuming that the majority of people at this stage in the game, because Thorn Countess just came out recently... So I'm going to assume not too many people have her awakened yet. Maybe a lot do, maybe more than I think do, but I don't think that many players have Thorn Countess fully awakened yet like Josh does. Um, so with that being said, I anticipate that the preferred combination for, uh, you know, main battle tanks, helis, things like that is going to still be the... Steel Fighter and Guardian of Truth combination. I've seen the occasional Steel Fighter and War Machine combination. I've seen the occasional Steel Fighter and Spanner combination, but I've seen a lot. The vast majority of people have been running Steel Fighter and Guardian of Truth uh, that I have seen. So it's going to be very interesting to see when army groups clash. I mean, obviously, there's still variables of like different unit, you know, tiers and things like that. You know, some units are going to be, you know, a lot stronger just naturally than others, depending on star level and things like that. But it's going to be interesting to see how some of these clashes in actual combat and in the field go because when you've got somebody that's got Thorn on there, it may end up being a slugfest if the other person's got Steel Fighter on. Um, you know, so it may end up just being an absolute slugfest that takes a long time. I mean, this attack's taking an unbelievable amount of time. Way, way, way longer than uh, Thorn Countess and Guardian of Truth did on the previous run. So, and we haven't even, I mean, you can see Josh's health bar there with, with this combination. We haven't even scratched 
his tanks. I mean, we're just kind of throwing BBs at his tanks at this point. So Guardian of Truth is clearly, and Steel Fighter are clearly not, uh, you know, going to be able to offer much in the way of damage against, uh, assuming evenly matched units, right? Um, but they're not going to do much against Thorn and Spanner, it appears. So it looks like we are finally on the home stretch here. So Josh should put us out of commission here pretty quick. There we go. All right, we are going to hit a retrain and we are going to come back with our third combination. All right, we are back with our third combination and ready to roll. The third combination in line here is going to be Thorn Countess and Angel of Light. And then of course, I have still got Steel Fighter and Guardian of Truth. So we're gonna go ahead and start the attack and see how this goes. Hopefully this does not take another what seemed like 15 minutes compared to Spanner, but we'll find out. So it seems like, and we'll take a look at the reports here, but it seems like, and I'm going to go through all of the reports at the end with you guys, but this is one that I want to go ahead and compare uh, side by side on screen with you guys, because it appears that the Thorn Countess and Angel of Light combination is doing quite a bit more damage at a faster rate to us in terms of being able to kill our units. I mean, it seemed like the uh, Thorn Spanner attack took 15, 20 minutes. It really didn't, but it seemed like it. Um, it took roughly five minutes on paper. I believe five minutes and maybe 12 seconds or something in that ballpark. Um, and it seems like Thorn and Angel of Light is moving a little bit quicker, which is very interesting to me because... Both officers are geared towards healing. They've got healing properties, um, you know, damage resist, things like that. Um, not really any offensive capability. Spanner has a little bit of a boost in damage when attacking bases slash fortifications, but nothing geared towards additional unit damage, and uh, neither does Angel of Light. So this is... Uh, this is interesting. Of course, again, we're going to have to wait till the report generates to be able to see some of the hard numbers and hard data, but it would appear that Angel Light, for some reason, is being able to do more damage to us at a faster rate. We're still not, just like with Spanner, uh, that kind of armor, that shield bar right there is pretty much, depending on, you know, the skills firing and things like that, it's getting about halfway to three-fourths of the way depleted uh, before the officer skills are finished firing. Um, and it's really preventing us from doing any damage to Josh's tanks. So... This is similar to Spanner in that sense, but again, it just seems like we're able to do, he's able to do quite a bit more damage at a faster rate to us with Angel of Light, but I'm very curious to see the actual numbers. Like time of attack is going to be very, very interesting to me. I'm very curious to see what the time of attack uh, difference is. If there is any, there may not be any, but there, there may be. So Josh has almost got us finished up here. We're almost to the end of the road. And we have done virtually no damage 
we've taken down the health bar of Josh at like basically none. Um, okay, so we're going to hit a retrain. We're going to go ahead and let this uh, battle report generate here. And we, I want to see, again, we're going to review all the battle reports at the end, but I want to see the difference in time of attack mainly is what I'm looking for. Time of attack uh, between Spanner and Angel of Light. Obviously, I didn't kill any of his units uh, in either uh, run, but so we had on, this was Angel of Light. This is the one that just generated. That, that attack took uh, four minutes and six seconds. And then the Spanner attack uh, took five minutes and 10 seconds. And the reason for that is, is because he did not kill my units with Spanner nearly as fast as he did with Angel of Light. So for some reason, Angel of Light is able to do... Uh, more damage at a faster rate than Spanner, but yet neither of them have skills uh, geared towards that specific thing. So that's interesting. I mean, we're talking about literally over a minute faster of a of an attack with Angel of Light. So that's very interesting. I honestly did not anticipate that. I figured it would be somewhere in the ballpark, um, you know, about the same time of attack and things like that. Uh, with them, you know, be both, both being healing officers geared towards healing and durability and survivability, things like that, uh, which they are, but again, neither of them have any real offensive based skill sets. Um, so I'm just really not sure what the difference is, but nonetheless, I'm glad we tested it so we can see that that angel of light does make more sense than spanner does. So we're going to finish this retrain here. And, uh, once we get retrained, we'll be back with our fourth combination. We are back with the fourth combination in line here. This is going to be Thorn Countess and War Machine. So we are going to go ahead and fire this up and see what we have got. Very curious. I've seen some people. I've seen some people running uh, Steel Fighter and uh, War Machine. I've seen the occasional uh, War Machine Spanner combination. So War Machine is... He's a good officer. He's always been a really great officer, in my opinion, in some ways kind of a little bit undervalued. Um... But I've personally ran him in my army composition on artillery units uh, mainly, but he is plenty good enough to be on tanks, so it'll be interesting. Uh, obviously, he's shredding us to pieces now. We got a little bit of, of uh, flesh taken out of Josh, but not much. He is chewing us up right now. The firepower, the damage, and the fire rate or the load speed um, are big, big draws to... War Machine, and, and honestly why I think he might be a top contender on the main battle tank and the heli, potentially. So we've got, we've got a few kills out of the deal, but we're obviously getting shredded uh, quite a bit quicker than... The other combinations so far so we're gonna go ahead and hit a retrain um we will see i want to go ahead and see what that we're gonna let that report generate i want to see how fast that attack was just real quick and again we're gonna review these um again at the end and i'll go through them all but i want to see what that attack time was one minute and 16 seconds and then the first combination that was thorn and guardian of truth was one minute and 46 seconds so on paper, of course, again, there's there's many variables in play here, right? And this is just to give you guys a baseline idea on some of the better officer pairings with um, Thorn Countess as a baseline to work off of. Uh, but on our trial run here, I mean, you're talking about, I mean, what is that? 16, I mean, you're talking about 30 second difference, 30 second difference in total time of attack. So we got 12 kills just like we did with Guardian of Truth, uh, but we got Josh was able to kill us 30 seconds faster. So that damage, uh, that increase in damage in firepower and in load speed from War Machine uh, definitely was an edge there. So we're going to finish our retrain and we will be back with the next combination. We are back with the fifth officer combination in line here. Josh has got Thorn Countess, Thorn Countess, excuse me for the uh, slip up there. Thorn Countess, you can roast me in the comments, and Death Adder. Uh, so let's go ahead and see what we have got uh, in store. I'm very curious to see what this combination actually does because me having 
Guardian of Truth, which is obviously geared towards tank and penetration, and Death Adder, which is geared towards, he's a versatile officer, uh, you know, mainly, primarily up to this point, used on ATGs for most people, uh, but does have a big penetration skill too, so... Looks like we had the early jump on Josh there, but looks like he took it uh, back. And obviously, guys, right, like I said, I just want to make sure that you guys understand that this is not, this is not like 100% accurate, right? No test in a game like this can be 100% accurate because we're dealing with so many variables, right? We're getting... Uh, you know, specifically with this combination, we're dealing with two officers who are, um, you know, heavily favored in a lot of ways on tanks and things like that uh, for their penetration, uh, you know, damage boost. It's a it's a chance of penetration. Right. Um, so like with uh, Death Adder, it's a 40 percent penetration boost. But with uh, Guardian of Truth, it's there's there's more involved there um, than just baseline penetration. So there's there's variables on when it penetrates and things like that. Um, so we could do this test multiple times and come up with different outcomes, of course. Uh, but again, the idea of this is to give you guys a baseline on what's good, what's bad, and then what needs to be further looked at in the way of if we have a couple combinations that may be kind of neck and neck, you know, then we can go into more detailed testing here, um, you know, both on the channel and then it'll give you guys a baseline to go in. Um, and potentially do some testing as well. So we just want to give you guys um, a good overview on Thorn Countess. Again, on um, you know, I want to give Josh a big thank you. He's got Thorn Countess fully awakened to level 60. Uh, so we're going to get some very, very good data here. So we're going to um, get this retrain done, and we will be back with our sixth and final combination, which is going to be the one I'm sure uh, pretty much all of you guys have been waiting for, and this is going to be Steel Fighter with Thorn Countess. Thorn Countess, just like all of the other runs here, is going to be the lead officer, uh, followed by um, Steel Fighter, and then of course we are going to continue to run Steel Fighter and Guardian of Truth. So we are going to, like I said, finish this retrain, and we're going to be right back, and we're going to see how this much-anticipated combination uh, stacks up. We've got our sixth and final, off, final officer combination here. This is the much anticipated combination. I think myself and all of you guys were equally interested in seeing how it stacks up. This is going to be Thorn, Countess, and Steel Fighter. Let's go ahead and start the attack and uh, see how this shakes down. I'm very interested to see how this goes. So it looks like, looks like we've done just a teeny tiny sliver of damage. Uh, we haven't taken any units yet, but we've done just a little bit of damage to Josh's health bar. Uh, we're hanging on, uh, but we've obviously lost quite a few units. So... I think this is going to fall somewhere in line again after this attack. Once this uh, report generates, we're going to take a look at this report um, and we're going to look at time of attack and things like that. And then we're going to go through, we're going to talk briefly about them. And then I'm going to give you guys kind of my overview thoughts on uh, this initial round of testing and give you guys what I think might be good combinations overall, depending on, um, a couple of things, um, you know, what grade of unit you've got, you know, like meaning star, star level, things like that. Like if you're rocking a nine star versus a 9.2 star, maybe this, those combinations are look a little bit different. Maybe, you know, some are more going to be more ideal than others, depending on your personal situation. But we'll, we'll talk about that here in just a few seconds once this is over.
All right, so we are done there. So we are going to go ahead and we are going to wait for this report to generate and then we are going to um, kind of discuss a little bit again about the overview, um, the takeaway from this testing round here. All right, so the report generated there, three minutes, two seconds. Uh, we obviously didn't kill any units. Uh, you guys can see, um, you know, that's about middle of the road. So here's what I want to do, guys. I want to talk a little bit about different scenarios uh, and possible combinations based on your situation personally. Um, if you are in a situation where you have got um, a higher end, you know, level unit, we're talking 9.1, uh, 9.0, I would say 9.0 is kind of, is a little bit above average, but it's not obviously anything that's going to blow the doors off. Um, so if you got a 9.0 unit, you might want to look at doing more of an offensive based officer combination, anywhere from nine to 9.2 stars, I would consider, um, you know, either slightly above to way above average in terms of where most people's units are. Um, you could maybe throw a nine star in there as kind of a, you know, average baseline uh, for most players now. Uh, but 9.1 and 9.2 most definitely are above average. Uh, so especially if you're at the 9.1 to 9.2, uh, you know, tier unit, then definitely look at more of an offensive combination uh, officer combination uh, with Thorn Count is for your units. And then obviously you could factor in, uh, you know, your tank advanced tech, things like that. Um, so obviously the combinations with Spanner and Angel of Light are going to be more survivability units. So if you have got a, um, uh, I would say average to below average caliber unit, it may be in your interest to look at doing one of these more survivability based officer combinations. A steel, uh, I'm sorry, not a steel fighter, but a Thorn Countess um, and a Spanner, a Thorn Countess and an Angel of Light, or a Thorn Countess and a Steel Fighter. Uh, steel Fight, I'm sorry, uh, Spanner and Angel of Light both had uh, better durability or survivability, it, it would appear, than. Um, steel fighter but then again maybe not because we've got the shields firing off with steel fighter um and steel fighter was able to kill a little bit quicker so here's the thing i think right away i think the one combination that we can all just cross off our list is going to be uh thorn countess and spanner thorn countess and spanner uh took the longest and it was not really based on survivability it was based on there was zero output really of damage it took a long time to get anything done uh and Steel, I'm sorry, uh, Thorn Countess uh, and Angel of Light, uh, literally, you can see, was over a minute difference in terms of overall um, length of time on the attack, which means the Angel of Light, for whatever reason, was able to put out more damage output at a faster rate. So if you're looking for survivability with a little bit of dash of offensive capabilities, then I'm, and you have a below average to below average tiered unit, um, then Angel of Light or Steel Fighter might be your combination. Um, I think for, if you've got a, um, higher end on average to above average, and you're looking to farm kills as much as you possibly can, and as fast as you possibly can, uh, then I think it's a no brainer. It's going to be Thorn Countess and, uh, War Machine, the combination of the, the shield from Thorn and the, uh, the firepower damage and load speed boosts from uh, War Machine were, were pretty lethal in terms of just straight up combat. Obviously, there is a little bit of drop off in terms of durability and survivability as I was able to get 12 kills on that combination. But nonetheless, it was able to shred through me at by no by no question the fastest rate out of any of these other combinations. So if you've got a if you're rocking a 9.1 9.2 unit. I would highly, highly suggest you take a look at Thorn and uh, War Machine, potentially. So that's kind of my takeaway, guys. Again, um, here, I'm going to go through. I'm going to I'm gonna bring up each one of the reports. This is going to be report number one. Um, so you guys, I'll hold it on screen for just a second as I go through here. Um, and you guys are going to be able to see. Um, whoops, sorry, didn't mean to go down like that. Um, you guys are going to be able to see, uh, you know, unit damage, unit damage dealt, suffered, uh, you know, kills, losses, things like that. And so I'm just going to pause for just a second on each one of these. So if you guys do want to go ahead and pause on screen um, and take a look at each one of these combinations and the results from them, uh, you are going to be able to do so. 
So we are moving up the chain here. I've got one. It's not letting me. So I'm going to hold this here for a second and then let's go here. Okay. Um, and then so I think this is going to be the last one that I was not able uh, to show you guys. Uh, so again, that's in conclusion. Um, there's a lot of variables, guys, I understand. Um, but that was about as evenly matched of a testing as we could possibly do. So you guys are able to see what makes the most sense, what makes no sense. And then you guys are going to be able to kind of, you know, take it from there and see what, see what works for you and your army composition and your units and, and so on and so forth. But with that being said, guys, I do appreciate you guys, uh, being a part of this video, hanging around till the end here. If you did, if you guys find value out of this video, if it helped you guys at all, uh, please consider hitting the like button and the subscribe button as both of those things help myself and the channel out tremendously. Um, and then as always, if you guys have access to Discord and are not already in the community Discord server, the link to that is going to be in the pinned comment as well as in the description of the video below. We would love to have you guys. Absolutely everybody is welcome to come be a part of the community server. So that being said, guys, I appreciate it and we'll catch you guys on the next one.